Let's press onwards here, and I'm going to talk a little bit about something called keyboard emojis in PowerPoint. And like I say, it's kind of an add-in. And I really like add-ins in PowerPoint because basically what they do is they let you extend the functionality of the program. If you don't know about add-ins, uh, there are a couple that I really like and use. And this is one that I think I might have talked about maybe gosh a couple of years ago or something but I wanted to revisit it real quick and also kind of show you something that I like to do with these in addition to PowerPoint how we can use them in Camtasia so basically add-ins if you go to your insert ribbon here you'll have this thing called add-ins essentially to get started if you click get add-ins PowerPoint will jump out to the uh, office site and it will load up all kinds of these add-ins and things. And I'm not going to get too much into that because, you know, that you can browse through these. Some are free. Some may require an additional purchase. Probably my favorite one is called Pexels, which gives you basically a search engine for the Pexels photograph and video site right inside of PowerPoint. In fact, that guy's right over here. So to install these, you basically just search for what you want. Pexels, like I say, is a great one to start with. And so you just type in Pexels, hit the search, and then you just click Add. Uh, it's stupid simple. I like it. Now, the other one that we're going to take a look at today is called Emoji Keyboard. So I'm just going to type in Keyboard. I guess you could do emojis also or emoji and you just click add and then once you do that what happens is it pops it onto your interface here and you get these add-ins on typically your insert tab okay so let's just take a quick look at this and kind of see what it is it's basically if we click it Again, it's going to go out to, I guess, the emoji site, and it's going to load in about 1,300 little emoji icons and stuff like that that you can use. So it's all kind of fun, but it has a, a few nice features, and I'll give you a couple of quick tips here. Let's go ahead and insert a new slide just for giggles. It has categories. So we have smileys and people, animal and nature, food and drink, sports, objects, travel, places, all that good kind of stuff. So you can kind of look through here and it's also searchable. So you can search for things. Let's just try one. You can search for a puppy. And then one of the interesting things is that right down here, you get to select different sizes. A lot of times, you know, if you want, oh, just say an extra small version more like an icon than a graphic, I'll call it. Uh, you might go with, you know, some of these smaller images, uh, but I generally go for the 512 pixel. Okay, so you, you basically just select the size that you want, and then when you click, it's going to add that at that size. Okay, so at that point, you can do kind of whatever you want to with it. You know, it's just a graphics image. You can resize it and all that good stuff, things like that. But the reason I like to use a larger size in general is because, let's take a look at this. It's going to insert it as an image. This is not a vector graphic, as far as I can tell. In fact, let's kind of test it. Let's try a smaller selection. Let's go with like a 32 pixel, which is kind of a standard icon size. And let's add our puppy again. So now, okay, there it is. Little guy like that. Let's hold the shift key and let's scale this guy up. And that's what happens with a raster image when you stretch it out and make it bigger. It gets all kinds of wonky and pixelated. Let's try that again. Let's delete that. Let's put it in again. So yeah, this might be okay for like a bullet point, you know, or something like that. But eh. for versatility purposes, if I choose a larger size to begin with, I can always make it smaller 
and I won't suffer a real loss in quality. And if I want to make it rather large, okay, you'll notice that the bigger size tends to be a little better quality and I don't get as radical pixelization as you might otherwise. Okay, so that's kind of the scoop there. Let's take a look at a couple of the other features. Well, let's make our puppy small. There's the little guy right there. Let's go back to, let's clear the search. If we go back to people, another kind of interesting thing is if we have just the regular smiley face, but you can also change things like skin tone, <laughs> uh, which maybe on a smiley face isn't the best example. Let's go to find some of the other assets here How about like a person. So let's add this little gal right here. So by default, you know, you get the yellow default, but I can also go ahead and change the skin tone. So let's try this. And you'll notice it even changes the preview, right? So a little darker. There you go. Boom. So it's just a, a nice versatile kind of a thing that you can use I like that. Let's go back to the default here and let's see what else we have. Like I say, about 1300 different kinds of things. And I put a few samples on this slide right here. All kinds of stuff, you know, lots of fun stuff. And again, it's all searchable and, and good things like that. Let's actually take this guy just for kicks and giggles. Let's copy it. Let's paste him here. And then let's make this bigger. Okay, so let's say I wanted to, you know, rough out a, oh, like a phone app or something like that. Well, of course, I could take a video clip and I could drop it on top here, you know, and just crop it and size it up. But essentially what I have is a nice little quick and dirty graphic asset. And I could do the same thing with other things like a computer monitor and whatnot. Let's try a little experiment. I haven't done this yet, but the idea comes to mind. <laughs> let's grab a shape and let's just kind of cover this thing up here. This display area. Okay, let's click on the image itself. Let's hold the shift key, let's click on the shape, and then let's go to shape format. Let's go to shape format and then subtract under merge shapes. So basically what that's going to do is I've now created a little asset, right, that has a transparent area here. In fact, if we grab our little gal, you notice that, oh, there she is. So now instead of that, you know, display kind of thing that was in the original asset, well, now I kind of have a little thing that I could put something behind and, you know, it will show through. So that might be kind of interesting. And there's all kinds of those kinds of things in here, quite frankly. Let's see, under objects, like I say, you could do the same thing with a computer monitor yada 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 and all that kind of fun stuff kind of nice thing about these is that they're free to use you can also use them for commercial purposes but you have to give attribution there's a little user manual here that explains all the different features and things and if you want to use them in commercial projects it's creative commons so you're supposed to give attribution and basically they give you the samples that you could, you know, for attribution, I wouldn't necessarily put it on the slide itself. I'd probably put it in the description with the video, or if I embed the video on my web page, you know, I'd just drop this in there somewhere to satisfy the attribution. And again, that's if you use them for commercial purposes. Right? But I like it. It's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. A little bit versatile. And then the other kind of nice thing is that I want to see where are these? These are under travel and places. If you're making like a, a square video for social media, 
Uh, some of these are kind of neat as backgrounds. So here I dropped one in and I cropped it to fit the widescreen. You notice that here it's a little more, you know, complete. Uh, actually, let's see, I think I can go to crop. Okay, and if I zoom out here, you can see that the original image is a lot bigger, but I just cropped it down and then added me another little guy. Of course, you can animate all this stuff and all that good kind of fun things, right? So you get some nice little backgrounds if you like. And then finally, the thing that I like about them is you can find something that you like. Oh, let's say like this rocket guy here. And if you right click on it and save as picture, save it as a PNG, right? I've already done that, so I have my little rocket file here. If we go over to Camtasia, let's jump in here just a little bit. There's Maggie the Wonder Dog. Of course, what you can do is take any PNG image and put it into your project. Maybe rotate it, animate it, resize it, do all that good stuff. Nice. And, uh, of course, you can add effects to it, drop shadows, everything you can do in Camtasia. Add it to your library, you know, to your icons, uh, and stuff like that. Right? So, add to library, and just have it inside of Camtasia then. All right. Any questions on that? Yeah. That one's kind of fun. I like it. Well, that's about all I had for tonight, folks. Any questions before we call it an evening? Uh, was that fun and useful? Everybody have a good time? Okay. If there are no other questions, I'll let everybody go. And we'll talk to you all next time. Thanks for coming.